So let's have a discussion on the different ways we represent molecular structures in organic chemistry. You'll find out in organic chemistry we are very lazy. Uh, if we can avoid drawing carbons and hydrogens, we will. We'll see that with line angle structures here in a little bit. Uh, if we can enjoy, avoid drawing all the bonds, like in this case, that's what we do with condensed structures. So uh, the way this kind of works, we're going to turn this into a Lewis structure here, but we typically write a carbon atom, and then immediately we follow how many hydrogen atoms it's directly bonded to, and then anything else it's bonded to, and then we'll move on to the next carbon in the chain. So in this case, we see we've got a carbon here. He's bonded to three hydrogens, and then he's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to two hydrogens, so we'll draw those in. And then he's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to two hydrogens as well. And is bonded to the next carbon in the chain, which again is bonded to two more hydrogens. There, and then go down to the next carbon in the chain, which is bonded to three hydrogens. Cool, and there's our Lewis structure corresponding to this condensed structure. And I started with a simplistic example here, but we're going to ramp this up pretty quickly. So the first confusing thing about condensed structures is we use parentheses here in a multitude of ways, or actually like really three different ways. Uh, and we don't often delineate, you know, explain explicitly how those different ways work. And so students don't realize that parentheses can mean different things. So let's talk first. Parentheses can be used to represent repeating CH2 groups. So when you see CH2s in parentheses, uh, you can't terminate in a CH2 normally unless you've got a double bond or something, but typically you can't. And so when you put a number of CH2s in parentheses, you're just saying how many there are in a row. So in this case, there's three in a row. You had a CH3 on the left, and you've got a CH3 and on the right, and then there's a bunch of repeating CH2s in the middle of the chain. So, and that's exactly the first method, uh, the first reason we'll use parentheses anyways, uh, but it's not the only one. So, and unfortunately, because there's a multitude of reasons for using parentheses, uh, students, again, don't often understand this, so we've got to spell that out. So here's the first one. If you see a CH2 in parentheses, that's repeating units, but it's only for CH2s. Anything else in parentheses, it does not mean repeating units. Let's take a look. So the second place we'll use parentheses are for multi-atom substituents that are coming off the main carbon chain. So if we take a look at this here, uh, we've got a carbon, and that first carbon again is bonded to three hydrogens. So, and then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. That carbon is only bonded to one hydrogen. What did it make that one hydrogen up or down is kind of arbitrary at this point. But it's also bonded to this bromine here. So the halogens, just like hydrogen, typically only make one bond. They're only one electron short of a filled octet. So that's coming off the main chain. And for a single atom coming off the main chain, it does not need to go in parentheses. And then we just move on to the next carbon. And that next carbon also only has one hydrogen, but we see this CH3 right here in parentheses. Now it's not a CH2, so it's not a repeating unit, but it's a four atom substituent here, a C and three H's, that's coming off the main chain. And so here we've got a carbon with three H's coming off the main chain. And if you have more than one atom coming off the main chain, that's when it goes in parentheses. For a single atom like bromine, again, it doesn't come off, but for an OH or a CH3 or anything more than one atom, we're going to have to put it in parentheses. So second use of parentheses. And then we just move on straight to our next carbon. I'll make it really long so we can line things up here. But that carbon's got two hydrogens. So, and then finally the last carbon, which has got three hydrogens in this structure. So there is our second use of parentheses. Let's take a look at our third use. So the third use of parentheses is really just a special case of the second use of parentheses. So in this case, if you've got multiple identical substituents bonded to the same carbon atom, and again, these will be many atom substituents, uh, then we'll use parentheses in that case. So if we look here, we've got CH3 in parentheses. And again, normally, if it's not a CH2, it means it's a branch, a many atom branch or multi atom branch coming off the main chain. So, and in this case, there are two of them, and they're bonded to the next carbon we see, or sometimes between to the preceding carbon we see. So at the left end of the molecule, it would be to the next carbon we see. Anywhere else, it would be to the preceding carbon, uh, as the case may be. So in this case, this carbon right here is bonded to two CH3s. So I'll draw one there, one there, and again, there's ch 3 so each of these carbons that it's bonded to has three hydrogens. Cool, and then it's bonded to a single H, and then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to two hydrogens, which is then bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to three hydrogens. 
And so this is your last use of parentheses here. And again, it's really just a special case of rule number two there. Uh, parentheses used for multi-atom substituents, you can also use it to show that you have got multiple of identical of that multi-atom substituent as well. Here, just like we have these two methyl groups, again, bonded to this carbon. All right, the next thing to keep in mind when turning condensed structures into Lewis structures uh, is when adjacent atoms need more electrons to complete their valence. So if both of the two atoms bonded to each other, uh, both need more electrons, that's when you're going to make multiple bonds. You're going to add pi bonds, either a double or a triple bond. So if we take a look here, so we've got a carbon bonded to three H's, just like we've been doing. So, and then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. That carbon's bonded to two H's, which is then bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's only bonded to one H, and then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain, which also is only bonded to one H, which is then bonded to the next carbon in the chain, which is bonded to three H's. So, but what we're gonna see here is that these two carbons right here only have three bonds. They don't have a filled octet. They both need one more bond. And so two adjacent atoms that both need one more bond and the easy solution is to make a double bond, add that pi bond. And now this would be the complete uh, Lewis structure matching with that condensed structure. See another example here. So got a carbon bonded to three H's to start off the chain. So carbon with three bonds to hydrogens. Then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to two hydrogens. And then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. And that carbon's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. Nothing else written. And that one's bonded to the next carbon in the chain. Nothing else written. And that carbon's bonded to three H's. And once again, we have a problem here. And we see that these two carbons both don't have a filled octet. Neither one of those has enough bonds. And so if we see, if we make it add a pi bond here, they still both only have three bonds. So we actually have to add another pi bond and form a triple bond. And so you can infer from the condensed structure, just when you start writing out the Lewis structure, if there's not enough bonds for two adjacent atoms, you add a pi bond. If there's still not enough, add a second pi bond for a triple bond. So, and this is kind of how you infer when there's double and triple bonds from their, these condensed structures. So the next thing to worry about with condensed structures involves oxygen. And if you have trouble getting all the atoms near an oxygen of filled octet, consider branching the oxygen from the main chain rather than incorporating it into the main chain. Now, oxygen having six valence electrons can typically make two bonds. So it's two electrons short of a filled octet, two bonds. Therefore, being able to make multiple bonds, it could go in the main chain or it could be a branch coming off the main chain. So if you put it in the main chain and have trouble getting everybody a filled octet, try making it a branch off the main chain. So if we look here, we've got carbon, so bonded to three hydrogens. So bonded to another carbon, bonded to one hydrogen, bonded to the next carbon in the chain here, also bonded to one hydrogen, bonded to the next carbon in the chain, and we'll put the oxygen in the chain, we'll try that out, and then finally bonded to the lax carbon here, bonded to three hydrogens. So if we look here, let's start with these two carbons, they're both only got three bonds showing, they don't have a filled octet, and so two adjacent atoms, neither one having filled octet, we can put a double bond in, and now they're both satisfied. Now, if we look, we got more problems to talk about. So this carbon is missing a couple of bonds. And this oxygen, though, is perfectly happy. So it's already got two bonds. We'll find out, you know, it'd have two lone pairs as well in a little bit. Uh, but it's perfectly happy, and we don't have a problem here. So the only atom that's screwed here, if you will, is this carbon right here. No filled octet, no way to get a filled octet. And so what we might do is redraw this entire structure, and we're going to put the oxygen here off the main chain as a branch. So again, carbon with three hydrants. No difference there. We already figured out that we're going to have a carbon-carbon double bond here. I don't want to change that. So, but for this next carbon, instead of making the oxygen the chain, I'm going to put the oxygen coming off the chain. So, and then I'd go straight over to this next carbon, which has three hydrogens. Cool, and we still don't have a perfect structure yet, so we'll see that uh, our oxygen here and our carbon here both only, uh, or both are one bond short of having what they want. Carbon wants four bonds, it's only got three. Oxygen wants two bonds, it's only got one. And the easy solution is to make one more bond there. So in this case, the auction's got two lone pairs as well. We'll find out, uh, we just add lone pairs to hetero atoms, atoms that aren't carbon and hydrogen to get them a filled octet. Uh, cool, this is the uh, corresponding Lewis structure to the condensed structure here. We'll see the same thing here uh, in advance here. By the way, this is a ketone as one of your functional groups. And you'll start recognizing this kind of pattern here, COC, uh, is common in ketones. 
uh, if we look here, this next one's going to end with COOH. This tends to correspond to a carboxylic acid, one of your other functional groups, and it'll be a pattern you start to recognize. But for now, we're going to try the same thing. So we've got a carbon, and it's bonded to three hydrogens. Cool. And then it's bonded to the next carbon in the chain, and that carbon's bonded to two hydrogens. So, and that's bonded to the next carbon in the hane, in the chain, in the hane. Uh, also got two hydrogens, and then we've got this carbon COOH, and maybe we just try COOH. So, and in this case, we start realizing we've got some problems. So, this carbon is two bonds short from a filled octet, but these oxygens both have two bonds and they're happy, and there's no way to get this carbon, of the appropriate number of bonds in a filled octet. And so now we're going to try branching one of those oxygens from the main chain here again. So, we'll put a carbon with three H's. Start it off next to another carbon with two H's, next to another carbon with two H's. Cool, and then next to a carbon, and we'll branch off the ox one oxygen, and then bonded to the other oxygen, which is bonded to the hydrogen. And if we look here, we can see that everybody's happy except for this oxygen and this carbon. This carbon's only got three bonds and wants four, this oxygen wants two bonds and only has one, and the easy solution is to add a pi bond and put a double bond there between carbon and oxygen. And now everybody's got the appropriate number of bonds. So the oxygens, it turns out again, typically two bonds, two lone pairs. So two bonds, two lone pairs, but this is the Lewis structure that corresponds to this condensed structure.